Hey everyone, today I have a special guest. I have MDMZ, and I believe that's from your initial, like from your name, right? Correct. Mah Mahame. From both my first name and last name. Yeah, man. Well, thank you for coming on, bro. I appreciate you coming on. I know that you got a lot going on in your life, and um, the, I kind of want to explain the reason why I wanted to have you on here and just kind of ask a bunch of questions. It's because I obviously I, I like to have people that I feel have something to share based off like experiences or just like uh, in your case is like the successes you've had with your YouTube channel. Your YouTube channel has 200, about 280,000 subscribers. Um, and you have about 39 K uh, followers on Instagram. And so I kind of want to know how you got to that point, you know, so hopefully you can uh, give some insight to me and to a lot of people that are trying to get into YouTube or trying to learn how to just uh, gain a following and stuff. So yeah, I guess one of my first questions is like, how did how did you start and how did you get to the point where you are are right now where you have this many subscribers? Well, first of all, thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate the invite. Um, YouTube wise, so if you actually go and check my, when my channel was created, it's I started back in two thousand thirteen, but it was I was just dumping really short, stupid videos on there. Just me experimenting with editing stuff. I was watching a lot of tutorials from uh, Andrew Kramer. I'm pretty oh, sure yeah, yeah, yeah. all the After Effects community is familiar with this guy. <clears throat> I really loved his stuff and I almost recreated most of his tutorials um, and was posting short, sec short experiments on my YouTube channel. Then eventually what happened is that um, although I was doing this on the side, it was completely f for fun. It was all just personal fun projects. And then when I started traveling a bit, I started putting uh, some travel videos. It wasn't to the level of your typical travel videos that you see on YouTube with all the cinematic camera movements and the super professional color grading, but it was fun. It was a fun experiment for me. Mm -hmm. um, so that came after all the VFX trial and error. And then I started doing travel videos and I was trying to fuse in, like trying to include a little bit of motion graphics, a little bit of cool transitions and mm. try to employ After Effects as much as I can. Somehow I transitioned to doing tutorials, to doing Photoshop tutor tutorials actually, mm. way before AI became a thing or I even knew about AI at all. So, um, and funny thing is that I was doing a lot of photography just for fun as well. I would pick up my camera outside whenever I travel, snap some pictures. And then I thought, why not spice them up a little bit with some editing in Photoshop? And I was posting my edits uh, on Instagram and Reddit. And some of the edits that I created, I also started animating through After Effects, using After Effects. And what happened is that I posted one video um, of, a, of an animated photo manipulation on Reddit and it got a lot of comments. And I personally, mm -hmm. just to mention, I really love going on Reddit. I wanted to mention that I really love going on Reddit yeah. and posting stuff there. It, it gives me a lot of good and bad feedback, <laughs> which, which, yeah, it's it gets mean sometimes, yeah. but it is what it is. That is Reddit. And yeah. uh, somehow it worked because uh, I posted one of the one one for animation there. People asked for a tutorial. And at that time, honestly, I've never done any videos like that. I've never done any video where I explain a process or t tell people how to do things. Mm -hmm. I thought I would be terrible at it, but I went for it because people asked for it. And I thought only a few people will see it. I ended up sharing the video from YouTube on Reddit as well. And mm -hmm. it got almost 10 K views in the first Damn. couple of days, which is, which is considered viral for me. Yeah. It was like a hit. I was like, wow. This is crazy. 10K, yeah, 10K, 10K is a lot. Views. Oh my God. It's really a lot. It really is a lot. And and uh, the funny thing is that I did it without a voiceover. So you can imagine the challenge. I had oh, to yeah, explain with, like, the whole text? process through text. Yeah, on screen text. Because mm. I was against the idea of speaking mm. uh, in my videos. I wasn't really comfortable with it. I was super, super like shy about it. So I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And I... Um, and then people started commenting and they loved it. So they loved the video. People started following the process. And then I started reading the comments and people were saying like, you should start adding in your voice. One thing that I do is like, I always read the comments. There's, mm -hmm. there's again, there's the good and the bad as well. But 
um, I try to listen as much as I can to what what makes sense in terms of what I should do next. A lot of the things that I did on my channel, a lot of the new things that I've introduced actually come from the comments. Mm. One of those things is that I should start uh, adding voiceover on my on my videos. That wow. actually came from the comments. Yeah. Um, so yeah, fast forward after doing a bunch of After Effects videos here and there, a few tutorials, still learning st how how to get things done, still learning YouTube and 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 how to put like good videos out there. And then the video that I this video that I'm I'm, I'm telling you about. Um, it's a parallax tutorial in After Effects. It's basically how you take an image mm -hmm. and uh, separate all the ele elements in Photoshop. So you got the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. And the tutorial teaches you how to split those elements in Photoshop, then take it over to After Effects to create a parallax effect. So meaning from a simple image, you kind of have more depth. So when the camera moves in After Effects, you can it kind of gives it a bit of life, there's mm -hmm. movement there, there's motion. And that is the video that blew up. Um, I did this video at the end of 2020, actually. So that was the year, we all know what happened that year. Yeah. Uh, so I took advantage of staying at home because I had a full-time job at the time. So I took advantage and I, I started putting up more content. And that was the one video that made me take things a bit more seriously. It has 11 million views right now. What? I think I got the most number of subscribers. Yeah, I think I got the most um, number of subscribers. The last time I checked, that video got me 70k subscribers. On Seven, 70k uh, from that one 70, video? 70,000 from well, that one video till it was posted till recently. What? Uh, so that's, that shows in your so analytics. Yeah. <laughs> it shows in your analytics that... It, it shows in my analytics 70-ish thousand of you, uh, subscribers just from wow. that one video. And I covered that as clearly as I can. And I think that's the part that most people, like a lot of people didn't know about before, although some tutorials did exist. Yeah. But I guess it's the presentation or the packaging of the whole thing that made a difference. So, yeah. So, so what, 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 what do you think got the, got that, got that video to get so much attention? Was it that you shared it on Reddit or have, have you ever paid for like advertisement at all? Or has it been just organic? Yes, it's purely organic views. I haven't paid for it. I haven't spent a single dime on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all organic. And I, I myself was surprised. And I think the interesting part is that it didn't blow up from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So this is something, this is one of the my favorite things about YouTube. You can put a video today and it will just blow up like a few months later. Really? And that's exactly what happened with my video. It was, get, yes, it was getting, it was getting a steady growth for the first couple of months. So the, the video, I checked, double checked the date. Uh, it was posted in, I think, either end of December or er, early January uh, 2021. And it started getting interest, like slow growth on YouTube mm -hmm. for a few months. But the big spike happened in October. Wow, like so almost a year. Like you can see the highest. Yes, almost a year later. Wow. The the biggest spike happened. Mm, yeah. I wonder, I wonder because it's sometimes... Sometimes somebody just uh, randomly just sees it. Somebody who has like a big following will see a video and then they'll share it like on Twitter or something. And then all of us, that sometimes leads to st to like that spike. I wonder if it was just the algorithm that helped you or maybe somebody shared that with somebody or, uh, yeah. I, do you have any insight on that or you just, you just, you don't really know. It just kind of happened. Uh, no, actually I, I checked that. Uh, it's mostly... Uh, the browse features on YouTube. So the mm. algorithm liked the video, I guess. Right. Which means that people like the video, I guess. So I kept re recommending the video on the homepage and as a recommended video on the side. Uh, it wasn't, most of the views were not coming from search. Mm. It was mainly coming from people. Just imagine someone browsing through his homepage on YouTube and they yeah. see the video, they see the thumbnail and it, it like, they're interested in, the, in watching the video, so they click on it. And that's where yeah. most of the views came from. Yeah, I, I find uh, when it comes to like the browse feature, I find sometimes conflict, I find myself conflicted because obviously I feel like, it's not obvious, but I feel like uh, based on my experience, I don't know if, if, if you feel the same way, but on YouTube, it seems to kind of separate like the whole AI thing from like uh, visual effects or even, uh, after effects, you know, like, like the audience, you know, because 
I feel like anything AI will tick will will typically give me this like a certain amount of views, like I think that a little higher views. And if it's anything not related to AI, it's like it doesn't exist almost. Like that video is almost like on the shelf or like because like I feel like YouTube sees my stuff as like no, no, you're you're an AI channel. Like we're only gonna recommend your AI stuff. Uh, surprisingly, that ha I, mean, I I noticed that, but it didn't it didn't define the direction of the channel. I was mm -hmm. I feel like because like I said at a certain time I was doing only travel videos, mm -hmm. purely travel videos for almost a year, and then I started doing photo manipulation videos for almost another year, um, and I, I I've heard about that before. I was also concerned about it as well. Um, mm -hmm. I keep hearing that YouTube will you cannot change your your niche or you cannot you cannot tar target different audience you cannot suddenly start yeah. change the whole topics on your on your channel but in a way it's all kind of similar it's all in the creative field hmm. um because the, even the ai we're doing it's it's purely creative ai it's all art basically yeah. uh so it's the audience is kind of similar i i see a transition there are people who, are, who used to do a lot of stuff on photoshop and After Effects are now using AI. So it could be a coincidence. Yes, I, I also have that thing where I, I, if I shift a little out of AI nowadays, mm -hmm. if I do a video that is a bit like on a different, different, like has a different, slightly different topic, mm -hmm. it will get a lot less views. But let's face it, AI now is like one of the biggest topics. It's the hot, yeah, that's and the thing. One yeah. of the most popular, it's the hottest topic. So it makes sense that AI videos will make would get better views. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Even with all the amount of videos that are out there, AI videos are still getting good, a good number of attention, like great attention. So that's, that's it's that, it's that interesting. It. It's be interesting good. because I think that since you and I are in like in tune, I mean, we're in tune to a certain degree in the whole AI, what's happening in the AI sphere, uh, when it comes to like the visual aspect, not everything AI, but uh, I feel like like sometimes I think everybody already knows this stuff. But it's incredible! It's incredible how many people are discovering, like stable diffusion, f still for the first time, and they're like, "What is this? Oh, like I want to learn it." Uh, and but to me, I, I feel like everyone knows what this is already. Like everyone on Reddit knows what this is, so like everybody has to know what this is. But I still get people watching my very old tutorials about how, the basics of how to use stable diffusion, and they're like, "How do I use this?" You know, and it's it's a very very interesting because. Yeah, AI is still just, it's still being discovered uh, till now, you know? Yeah, it's it's still fresh. I would say it's still new, even with all the hype and everything is, is slowly getting into uh, it reaching the mainstream audience. It's not only people who are in the in the industry or, or who are in the, in the AI community. And that's why you get a lot of people um, I also personally see, I saw a pattern recently where a lot of people try to get into it and I see this through messages or, or comments. I get a lot of messages from people who either like are my friends or people that I know from Instagram that, are, that, had, that have never tried AI before. They don't even know what, what it is, but mm -hmm. they're trying to do it. And that's great. They're, they're watching the tutorial, they're asking questions they have almost no technical experience when it comes to AI related stuff. And yeah. we, we both know how it, it gets complicated, right? So it's, yeah. it's amazing to see people who have never tried it, but they're trying their best to do it. Some of them succeed. Some, some of them actually do really well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think those who lack a bit of lack patience, uh, those who just want something ready to use, yeah. uh, they, they struggle and they mostly give up. They mostly give up. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it, it is getting there. It is getting, it's getting there. They, when you started, uh, you you how serious were you taking YouTube when you started? Were you thinking like, okay, I want to take this? Like, at what point did you feel like, okay, this is something I want to pursue? This is something I want to take serious? Like, what was the what was the defining moment for you when it came to that? Uh, it, it was literally when I saw the analytics of the the video that hit eleven million views. When I saw the graph going like this, and obviously. You check your revenue as well. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, wow, this makes money. Actually, I'm actually making money out of this, like real money. Yeah. Um, it's 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 yeah, it's it's insane. That's when I was like, wait a minute, what am I doing? You know, yeah. this is like, <laughs> this has the biggest potential. 
um, I should literally give it more attention. I should give it more of my time. It's 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 working. I mean, I yeah. love it. People love it. Is is you get paid for it? So wow. Yeah, that's when I started to take it take it a bit seriously. What about like at what point? Like, do you can are you doing this full time? Are you living off of what you make like uh, on YouTube or yeah? Are you doing other work or what is it? What is it that you're doing? Uh, currently, yes, I've I've uh, switched to YouTube full time since January this year. Oh man! So right now, yeah, you can see a bit over ninety percent of my whole time and dependence and revenue is is relying on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I still have I still do a few freelance projects here and there every now and then, uh, whenever the the project is interesting and I, I I feel like it's challenging and I can learn something out of it. I still have one client. He's a, a friend of mine. He's a, a YouTuber as well. I create thumbnails for him. Personally, I love to create thumbnails. It's almost my favorite part. Oh, that's my worst part. I hate that. So, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. That's it's, my least it's favorite part. almost my favorite part. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. That's interesting. I guess we we we, we all have different um, preferences, I guess. For me, it's the thumbnail. I think it's because it marks the end of your hard work. Yeah. And it's it's just relaxing for me. It's almost like therapy, you know. Yeah. I open you, Photoshop and I'm like, okay. You know, <laughs> I, I, for me, the, the part I hate the most. I think this is just the part of me that's just kind of like <clears throat> I want the video just out already. Like I want, like I'm I did it. I worked hard on it on the edit. I just want it to be out. I just wanted people to watch it. I want people to see this. And but then then I but then I feel like I have to stop. And then okay, now I gotta create a thumbnail. Like, how do I do this? Like, and All the thing right. is, like, I, I feel like sometimes I'm not, like, I don't have the best eye for that. So sometimes it comes easy. Sometimes, like, I have an image. It's the perfect image. I used it during the during the process of the video. Okay, I'm just going to use this super fast. It's It looks great. It's good. It, and it gets a lot of views. But then sometimes I'm just stuck there and I'm like, you know, how do I do this? How do I do this in a way that's a little bit more interesting? And I like, mm. and I hate that. I hate that part where I feel like I, I stop, like something is blocking me from just putting this video out. What is your kind of uh, revenue system that you have? Because I imagine that you're not making everything just through AdSense, right? Because you have other uh, revenue streams as well, right? Yeah. So AdSense actually is, is pretty much the lowest. Uh, mm. if, if you look at it as a pie chart. Yeah, AdSense it's, is almost like a. It's like very, like the sliver of the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> it, correct. Exactly. It's a very tiny, tiny, tiny slice. Um, the rest of it comes mostly from affiliate marketing. I've I've been um, affiliate affiliate revenue was my biggest portion of revenue for for a while before I started doing YouTube full time. Because when I started doing YouTube full time, I started paying more attention to brands and replying to emails uh, more often and, and taking the time to discuss the creative direction and stuff like that and to put up more to put more effort into like promotional segments and sponsorships uh, for for brands and clients so right now I think uh, affiliate and sponsorships are quite close I think sp um, sponsorship revenue is a, is a bit higher right now um, so it's uh, you got sponsorship the highest uh, and then affiliate marketing, and then Patreon, which is quite interesting. Mm, yeah. And then Patreon. the lowest, right? So yeah. you've got the highest is uh, sponsors. Mm. And then affiliate. Patreon is the third right now. And the lowest would be your uh, the AdSense. AdSense revenue is the lowest. Just to kind of be clear, just in case some people are not familiar with this. like, So um, affiliate uh, is when a brand uh, gives you like a code, for example, and they get your viewers get some kind of discount if they go to that code or if they click on that code, you get a certain percentage, right? Of the, of the sale. Yeah. So affiliate, uh, there are a few types of it, uh, but generally speaking, it's when someone clicks on a link that yeah. you, uh, toward to a product that you're affiliated with um, and they make a purchase. It's usually within a certain time or a certain, uh, certain number of days. They make a purchase. You get a you get a commission, and that commission varies depending on the brand and depending mm -hmm. on the product. It's usually somewhere between. I think it goes from five percent to like twenty percent. I guess twenty percent would be very generous. I'm not sure yeah. if there are any brands who, who have higher commissions. Uh, that's the concept, and yeah, it's there. There, 
variations of it. There are sometimes discounts that are included. There are sometimes uh, uh, promo codes, depending on the on the deal you make with the brands. A lot of brands have this available on their website. So if you're making YouTube, you can just, if you're doing YouTube videos, you can, and you're interested in, in uh, advertising affiliate links, you can always check if the brand, brand that you're in, including in your videos have an affiliate program. Usually they have it on their website. Right. Some brands do have affiliate programs that they only reveal to like certain creators or keep it sort of private only to select, like only for select few creators. Uh, that's that's a little different. That doesn't happen often. Most of the time they have it on the website. Yeah. yeah. And sponsors is kind of like, I think a lot of people have already experienced the sponsors kind of uh, videos where someone will stop like in the middle of a video will say this video is brought to you by whatever, you know, uh, or this video is sponsored by so in this company, you know, and, it, and then you kind of go over like a 30 second uh, explanation of whatever the sponsor is. And then you get a percentage uh, from that. And, uh, and I know that because I have had sponsors and I, I actually want to thank you because uh, when I first got my when I got my first sponsor, uh, I actually reached out to you since I knew that you had more experience oh, yeah. in this. And I asked you like, Hey man, like, how do you go about this? How much should I charge? I have this amount of subscribers and <laughs> you know, what's, what's, what's something that's not going to scare the, the, these people away. Like what is a fair amount? And then you went, you broke it down really well to, for me. And I, I really do appreciate that. Um, no, maybe, maybe I should even talk about how you broke it down. You, you do, you broke it down based off like <laughs> subscribers and also, uh, package deals, right? Like uh, making one video where you mention the product, but then use that video multiple times and charge space, charge a certain amount for those extra times that you do mention them again, if, if they agree to that, obviously, um, whatever, I mean, you can come to some kind of agreement if you talk to them. And that's kind of the advice you gave me. Um, is, is there anything else that yeah. you would add to that? Yeah, so I, I really am I'm a, I'm a huge fan of trying to get that deal with all brands the package deal yeah uh, i think it's it's it helps the brand as well it's fair for both sides because you cannot guarantee that the video, the ad is going to be seen um certain you, you cannot yeah. predict the number of views that the video is going to get so by doing that package not only you you get um obviously you you get a better deal with the brand for yourself but at the same time you give them more visibility because by doing it in three videos at least you guarantee that most of the time, one of those three videos at least will, will perform very well, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's very rare that three videos in a row will kind of fail or not get enough views. So that's that's great a great deal for the brand themselves. And I try to always explain this. Most of the brands I work with, they're, they're quite understanding. And um, yeah, if I, if I would add anything to that is I prefer to work directly with brands. Mm -hmm. gives me this flexibility and they they most of the time we are very under, understanding of this kind of things as opposed to working through an agency or i'm not i'm not saying it's bad uh it's, there are agencies out there that are doing really a uh, really good job especially for people who cannot or do not have the time or do not have the skill to communicate with the brands or reach out or don't want to put effort into it the agency, the agency is good. Personally, I prefer to talk directly mm -hmm. to the brand. It makes things more personal. And if I want to ask for certain things or or double check on a certain feature or something that is not working, then I just talk to them directly. Yeah, and yeah that makes sense. Get a get a faster response. Yeah. Another question I have is like uh, related to just like because of AI, how it's evolved so fast. And I know that lately you've been doing a lot of AI videos. Um, do you feel do you feel some kind of like pressure to try to like stay up to date with everything that's happening AI wise or because uh, I, I feel like and I notice when I when I look at your channel is like it's not like you upload like I've seen other AI content creators or just uh, YouTubers and they are putting video out, videos like almost like two videos a week or once a week because they're always trying to you know uh, talk about the latest thing. Like, I noticed that you don't really do that. Like, what is your strategy when it comes to that? And just with the whole AI space? Yeah. So <clears throat> to answer the first part, I do feel the pressure. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. uh, I do feel the pressure most of the time. And uh, a lot of the time when that happens, it just, I just let go and decide to just take a break because it's, it 
it becomes too much and it is move, things are moving too fast. Yeah. So I'm at peace with it right now. There's no way I'm going to keep up with everything. <laughs> um, at least with the format of videos that I'm making, I'm sure you know, and we both are very similar in terms of the kind of type of content, content that we put out. Yeah. We spend a lot of time experimenting. That's what makes our videos good. That, that's what makes, that's what adds value. It's that we test things ourselves. We try to figure out what works and what doesn't. What are the best practices? We try to give as many tips as we can to people. And that takes time. That mm. you need to spend days just, I mean, I've, I've, I, you have no idea how many sleepless nights I have before a video comes out because Man. I'm experimenting and testing and putting the work. It's fun. I'm not complaining. I love it. Yeah. Um, I, I take a good break afterwards. After every video, I treat myself very well. <laughs> Trust me, I, I take care of myself. After that's, every video nice. that goes up, I take a good break. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, there's that, that pressure. The pressure is there. But mm -hmm. um, I'm also glad that there are other people who are able to put that, that, that many videos out uh, in a week, like you said, or at that frequency because I watch them and I learn from them and I know what's new. And that's yeah. how I keep up with things. Yeah. But to try and cover everything or make a video about everything that is out or everything that is trending as well is not possible hmm. let's face it it's it might be possible at, it might be possible to make a tutorial on everything but the quality won't be there right at least from my from my perspective from the way i do things it might be different for some for others i'm not sure yeah. but yeah yeah because the, the videos you're seeing that are like at that frequency are, are not tutorials that's true. They're um, like news. If I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. You're correct. Yeah. It's like yeah. news. Like, yeah. uh, but I know that there are people who do tutorials quite a bit. Like, uh, I think one of the examples was like, I think respect. Ol Olivio. Respect. Have you ever heard of Olivio? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Sar something. I forgot. Yes. His last I name. know who you're talking if about. If he's watching, about. I don't think he's watching, but if he's watching, sorry, uh, Olivio, uh, much respect. I watch your videos all the time, by the way. Um, but yeah, he's, I love his he, videos. Yeah. He's always, videos. he's always, uh, making videos and tutorials. The one who I haven't, you know, and I kind of, uh, just noticed this recently. I was talking to someone about this. Um, you, 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 you have to know AI, AI entrepreneur, right? Uh, the AI, uh, yes, guy. of course. Like this guy was, yeah. uh, putting out videos almost like twice a week or once a week. And actually it's been like, I think like. I don't know how long it's been like he did his, his frequency has stopped uh, drastically like of how much you're, he puts you're up right I did watch a video of his where he talked about how he was kind of getting like burnt out and his health was being affected by all the all the you know the pressure of doing all these videos and and I wonder if there was like a burnout for him or or I don't know maybe there is uh maybe it, it is I, I I would say maybe possibly a burnout um do you try to be careful for that? Like just getting burnt out? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I've seen, I've seen the video where he talked about it. I think it was a Q and a video and he expressed yeah. it. Yeah. It's a Q and a, it's uh, yeah, I, I could relate. I can relate to that. Uh, there were times where I really experienced burnout for sure. Um, but I think the more you do it, the more, the more you understand your workflow, the, the more you understand, the more you start prioritizing stuff. Um, whether it be it YouTube or personal life as well, because we're not bots. We're not, we're not, you know, we're yeah. not, um, even though AI, we're not, like, even though AI entrepreneur like acts like a robot, he really isn't a robot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he isn't a robot. Exactly. That's a, that's a very good point. Yeah. He does. He's not a robot. guys. Spoiler alert. He's real. He has feelings. Yeah. He gets tired. He gets burned out. It's, yeah. it's not good sometimes. So you get a, you gotta keep that in mind when making videos, uh, especially uh, the bigger you get someone like uh, uh, AI entrepreneur, his channel has grew really fast. Yeah, uh, it did. And the stuff he does are really amazing. So people, I'm pretty sure he gets pressure from people as well to try and get more videos out. The, the crazy thing about him is that he was doing informational stuff, like on new stuff, but at the same time giving tutorials on how to use it. So it was like crazy. this double pressure of like being on top of things and and I, I try to learn from like, you know, his like what he's doing, because I'm like, OK, I don't want to do I don't want to like get to a point where I, I have to keep up with every little thing. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that guy. You know, I, I, if other people can be that and they can handle it, then that's great. I think that, you know, obviously, as long as it's healthy, you know, mm -hmm. 
Um, but I realized, like, I'm like you, I realized, like, okay, at, at some point, I felt like I need to, okay, in order for me to be uh, relevant or to grow or to stay on top of things, I have to come out with the latest thing. And the, the, I, I got to always talk about the whatever topic. Like, I felt this pressure. I didn't always do it, but I felt the pressure that if I'm not doing it, then I'm, that I'm not really being a YouTuber. I'm not being, like, the dedicated YouTuber. And I just felt this, like, this pressure to just always stay on top. And then at some point, I just realized, like, you know what? Like, I, I, I can't do that. I, I got to just focus because or else, like you said, the quality is going to suffer. And I think I'd rather take my time on this and just get topics that I find that are interesting and that it, it's more for the visual stuff, more for the video production kind of thing, visual effects kind of thing, and not be that guy who tries to cover every single topic that has to be related to it. Because then I, I, yeah, I just, I can't possibly do everything, you know. But at the moment, I'm enjoying the whole process alone still trying to figure out what kind of things I, I can delegate. So if we're talking about someone who has a team and works uh, within a, within a like, uh, not individually, he has people around him, it could be possible to put up more, more and more videos out there. It becomes a business, basically. And maybe mm. this person has to be business-oriented, I feel, more than just artistically oriented. Um, personally, I, I take my time with every single video. And that's, that's I, I don't want to rush the process. I don't want to just you know, make a video without, I, I want to pay attention to every single detail. Like mm. I, I remember every, every single video that I made. I remember the process. Um, I like to also spend time optimizing old videos as well, because this, this is really important. A lot of YouTubers I see neglect that. It's very important to go back to old videos, especially the ones that are not performing very well and spend a little of, a bit of time optimizing. Mm. You, know, you, you have no idea how much difference it makes to change the tags and titles and thumbnails frequently on your video because youtube is an evergreen platform like an old video can can uh, can gain a lot of views like organically at it, like way later than the the posting date you, yeah a good example is the video we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. so it's i think it's a good move to um spend spend as much time as as you can on 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 your videos if you feel like it's that's your craft and you're doing it if you use reddit the thing is that with reddit though you got to be ready for the criticism and <laughs> uh, and like the, the yep. biggest like this is the biggest thing with reddit like and this it's almost never fails you get like either really good po you get positive comments and you get obviously your negative comments but then you get the people like and this one i think hurts the most when they're like yeah this is good but this can be better or this, like, it's the people that just like, like, it's not good enough. It's never good enough. It's just like, there always has to be that person or like yep. group of people who's like, yeah, this is cool, but you know, this is what's wrong with it and all this. And I'm like, okay, why can't you just say, Hey, it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I know. I know. And it's, it's, it's amplified within the AI subreddits actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's amplified. It is. It is. Yeah. It feels like it. I think it's, it's, it, it feels like it, but come on. There's, there's this and that there's mm -hmm. really both sides. I, we've, I think we've both got, um, a really good push from Reddit. I used to share my stuff out there as well. There's, yeah. there are a few mean comments every now and then it's fine. As mm -hmm. long as it, if it has a bit of criticism, I'm fine with it. Be mean. Mm. It's okay. It's all right. Yeah. As long as it's fair and it's not misleading. Yeah. Uh, I'm okay with it. But, yeah, there's the extreme where some people are just mean, just just to be mean, or they they're sick of seeing a certain thing, or they they just have a certain hate for a certain thing. Yeah, they just want to be mean, so that that I just ignore. I, and I I gotta ask because yeah. speaking of hate, like I know that with probably with the big amount of subscribers you have, you definitely get a lot of uh, criticism on on YouTube and like uh, or hate comments. Like, how do you handle that? Yeah, you're you're not wrong. I do get a few of those every now and then. Uh, there's a lot of good comments, uh, mm. and I think it's it's known. I'm not sure if it's the same for you, but sometimes that one comment, like one that one bad comment, you want to pretend that it doesn't affect you, but it actually does. Especially mm. when you put a lot of effort into a thing to put out. Uh, but I think the worst is when someone comments something misleading to me. Yeah, that's that's the worst. That's the one that I 
I cannot just look at it and ignore. I have to reply mm -hmm. because it also gives other people the wrong idea. Um, if you wanna, you know, if you wanna criticize, at least watch the whole video through. Because sometimes you get a comment saying a negative thing, mm -hmm. uh, complaining that there's no answer on a certain thing, but actually the answer is there. It's in the video. Right. But I think with the the new TikTok culture and like the the endless scrolling, people are not paying enough attention. Yeah. Um, for certain things, some people. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the kind of comments that I'm like, okay, I gotta respond to this. I gotta say something. Mm -hmm. But if it's pure hate, honestly, I just try to ignore it. I just, yeah. I just move on, you know. Um, it doesn't happen that often, mm -hmm. to be honest. But because we're in the AI space, there are people who are hateful against AI. So mm -hmm. that still happens. That mm -hmm. I still get a bit of hate because I'm doing AI stuff every mm -hmm. now and then. Um, sometimes I try to explain in the comments. Sometimes, sometimes other members reply. Yeah, that feels so good. Oh yeah, when they step up and <laughs> sometimes and you get a hate comment. Yeah. Oh my god! Sometimes you get a hate comment, and then there's like five replies. Yeah, from yeah. From other subscribers calling that person out. I'm like, yes. yes. Yeah, like sometimes, like the the, <laughs> the comeback is like like what they say to defend you is better than anything you could have said. And you're like, oh, I mean, man. Exactly. Like, yeah. It's exactly. I just put love, love, love. Yeah. <laughs> you know, love reaction, love reaction. <laughs> you, yeah. And like, just move on, yeah. I, I, I honestly, like, so one of the things that I do, like, I don't really, nowadays, I, I try not to, like, uh, engage with that because it is, it is stressful. Mm. Like, I can have, like, 10 good comments and then there's just one negative comment and that can ruin my day. Uh, and I just learn to just, like, oh, yeah. either ignore it or if, like you said, if, if it's something that I have to respond to because something is like they're, they're, they got something that's incorrect, some incorrect information or something that, or it's misleading or something, then I, maybe I'll, I'll say something. But for the most part, I try to either ignore it or sometimes I, I literally just say like, it's all good. Like some people will say like, oh, I, you suck or whatever. Like, and I'm just like, all good, man. I'll love. And I just put like a little heart. And then I think that they don't even know what to say after that. And they just like leave it alone. And and I just felt like I feel better because I'm like, you know, I, I still said something, but I was I was being the bigger person and just like not not engaging with the negative ne neg the negativity that was going on. And yeah, yeah, because some people can be just like straight up like like as if they almost as if they know you or something personally or something. They're just like like trying to be as insulting as possible. Um, but uh, yeah, man, I like I I found that ignoring ignoring them is like a the best thing you can do because that's the move that's the yeah move. yeah that's yeah. the wisest wisest thing to do i think it just mm -hmm. otherwise it will it will can it can ruin your day you go on with the conversation can really ruin your day um i think it, it makes their day better because i think hateful co the people putting hateful comments i think they're anticipating a reply they want they want a response mm -hmm. they're not putting it out there for nothing yeah. So I think it's best, like, I think what you do is great. If you reply with a positive thing, that's amazing. Because that's the least thing they expect. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's good. I think I'm going to start doing that. Yeah. Just put out all love, you know. Yeah. Peace. All love. Yeah. I mean, what can you say <laughs> to love. that? You can't, yeah. You can, like, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. I think it's just like a, a way to just diffuse the situation. And I don't know, maybe yeah. even co convert the person to be a fan or something at some point. I don't know. And I had a guy who was just like, he was saying some like really mean stuff, like, and I think I did, I, I don't know, I forgot if I responded or I forgot what I said, but then the guy was like, oh man, I'm so sorry, man. Like, I don't, I didn't mean it like that or whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, and then the guy started sucking up to me. Like he started to like, like I, I put out a video and he's like, bro, like AI entrepreneur copied you. Like he did everything. He said exactly what you said. Oh, like, uh, like, and, and I'm like, uh, what's wrong with this guy? Like, he's just like, <laughs> so, suddenly yeah. he's like, he's like insulting me. And suddenly he's saying like, oh, like, yeah, like, uh, like trying to suck up to me and wow. try to compliment me. And it was just like, it was such a weird dynamic. And then the guy just stopped. Uh, yeah, I just stopped at some point. And yeah, it was just weird. <laughs> but yeah. Oh my God, that's that's very interesting. I I think I've heard about that before. One of my friends, he's a creator on Instagram, mm -hmm. and he shared one time on his story a screenshot of a conversation with someone. Mm -hmm. So this person mess mess. My friend has has so many followers. Obviously, you cannot respond to everyone, right? So this guy messaged him over a few months, and it was 
the message was under the you know the hidden request thing that you cannot always yeah, cannot yeah. see for on Instagram. It's like a spam folder, and it was always like hello, hi, uh, and then something like I have a question, and then st- he start started getting mean. He's like, yeah. why are you not responding? Oh, you suck anyways. Oh, this person is better than you. He started getting meaner and meaner oh, and meaner. No. And then when when the guy responded, eventually my friend re- replied to him with with one. He replied with a voice note. Mm-hmm. saying like what he, he just used your strategy actually mm-hmm. he went in all just all love and all peace and love you know mm-hmm. like why are you talking like like this to me mm-hmm. i don't deserve this da, da, da. So, that's all like nice and kind stuff and this guy replied saying dude i'm your biggest fan i yeah. love all your stuff <laughs> and everything <laughs> i swear like the, the that's it's crazy it was crazy to just just read the, the whole interaction. Uh, but again, because it's, you can leave this part or, or keep it, it's up to you. But because the AI is so unpredictable, right? So some of the collabs don't go well. Mm. And by collabs doing AI transformation, by collab, we meaning we, it means you get someone's video and you try to stylize it. Yeah. At least that's the work fusion collab, right? It doesn't always work very well. So I try. I try to do it, but it's it's not something I'm spending so much time on because it could be a waste of time. Yeah, that's if the thing. Like if you, yeah, sometimes time not, time is like a big thing it. that I start I'm starting to value more of because, like, even meeting up with like potential clients, like I, I have I've had people just like, like, oh, we would love to have a meeting with you. We want to talk about this. It's like this company that's trying to implement AI into like an ad or something. And then I'm just like, you know, we have a meeting for like half an hour or an hour talking about it. And I'm just like, I, I, and then I realize at the, like, and sometimes they don't contact me after that. Or sometimes I wonder like, did they just ask me for the workflow and I just gave it to them? and now they don't need me or yeah. like what the like and also like i should have just charged for the meeting i shouldn't just have like meetings like that like i should charge them for like consultation kind of thing and uh yeah i've been learning so much to just since i started doing all this you know um but yeah it almost becomes like a free consultation basically yeah, uh, yeah. what i try to do is because I, I still get people who reach out on instagram for like uh work gigs paid yeah. gigs to do animations and stuff like that and my my first response is like drop me a brief just mm-hmm. drop me a brief and then after that we can get to talk because like you said it could be you don't want to waste your time and you don't want to waste their time as well what exactly. if their direction does just what is it what if it's something you cannot even do yeah sending a message on instagram saying hey how much do you charge for ai animation that's so vague like yeah please please don't don't send that yeah it's, just, it's so like and this applies to all industries actually not just yeah. us like how much how much do you charge for painting a house yeah how big is your house yeah, yeah. You know? what colors do you need what it's, kind of paint are you using it's, it's, well, like yeah like it's exactly there's a lot of things that go into come play. on yeah it, but then also just kind of me a little bit venting too uh i had like a person reach out to me and said like I was on vacation, but they, they text me and they're like, Hey, I, I want to like uh, hire you to do this video. Like, let me like, please let me know if you're interested or whatever. And, and I know, I know nothing about the video. I know nothing. And I, and I read it and I, and I just said, okay, I'll respond to this person at some point I'm on vacation. And then like literally yeah. like a few hours later, the person says, Oh, well, I, uh, well, I guess you don't want to do it. All It's all good. You know, whatever, like almost like this attitude of like, like I didn't respond at the time that you wanted. So now you're giving me this attitude. And I'm like, I like, I said, bro, like I responded to that guy. And I said like, bro, don't do this to, don't do this to, to people. Yeah. Like don't, don't ever do this to, to potential clients and stuff or people that you want to work with because like you weren't patient enough to wait for me to respond. And you already assumed that I didn't want to do it or that I was not interested because I didn't respond like within a few hours, like, that's just that, that's not gonna get you far man like you have to be patient and like and uh yeah and the guy was like kind of defensive at the beginning and then at some point he like i told him hey man i was just on vacation and then he's like oh okay i didn't know that whatever you know so that's the thing i told him bro you don't know what i'm you don't know what i'm doing right now you don't know where i'm at you don't know what i 
but like when you become that person, like you're the center of like everything and you like, I have to respond to you. Like, and I feel like sometimes uh, I've learned that like also some people feel entitled to your attention and I'm just like, I can't give everybody attention, man. Like, I know that you see me on these videos, you see me on these things, but I I also have stuff to do, man. Like I have a life too, you know, it's just, but sometimes exactly. I, I understand that some people feel like, that they they should be able to reach you somehow and it's it's not a, it shouldn't be like that you know it's like but mm. yeah so so a bit of a it's, a it's a level of entitlement actually you mm -hmm. haven't even discussed anything yet and imagine i think you missed out on a, on a bad client that's that's yeah you I, it's, it's a positive thing yeah you know, getting that message early on is a is a is a red flag so you're like you know you know, yeah. I shouldn't work with this person. Yeah. It's good. I'm, I'm glad they, they sent that message, actually. Otherwise, yeah. we'd be stuck in a very good uh, yeah. relationship with it, with this client. It just yeah. It doesn't seem good. Mm -hmm. workflow that I follow religiously. So my PR is like three, three, three videos a month. I think the maximum time, the maximum number of videos I've put on YouTube was three videos a month. And I'm not, I'm not counting shorts, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. Shorts is very random for me. Sometimes I put up few a couple of shorts uh, per month sometimes I, I don't put anything but videos my I think my average for the past two years uh, has been one video a month actually one video a month um one video a month you would think like where's this guy this guy is not putting any work right <laughs> this guy's putting one video a month what are you, I, what, are you what, serious or what else like, are you doing <laughs> yeah bro like I don't so, I, I don't know how you put out one video a month and have two hundred thousand subscribers, bro. Like I, I feel like everybody else is like working their, their butt off to try to get the uh, you know I, I feel like this pressure like man, I'm not putting enough videos and you're doing like one a month, like I could do one a month easy, you know? But uh but, but, yeah. Okay. I think I'm doing two I think I think I got to a point now where I'm doing two videos a month. Um but there was a time, especially when I was uh uh, when I had my full-time job, I couldn't do more than one video a month. Like if I did a video a month, that was like su success and I was working yeah. day and night. But like I, like I mentioned earlier, I really spent a lot of time experimenting. Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time researching, a lot of time I take the software and just try to get the best out of it and make sure it's working properly and I can exp explain it. So like the whole myth of like you have to put out at least once one or two videos a week is it does not apply to you or you it does not apply in general you think the frequency of uh posting as many as you can to to remain relevant on youtube i don't i think it's a myth mm -hmm. i don't think i don't think it's the case anymore maybe it was at a certain point before maybe the algorithm uh um uh, boosted certain channels that posted more before i don't i don't think it's the case anymore mm. um and and um i don't think i don't think if i don't think people should worry about that to be honest as long as you okay if you're starting if you're early on if you're in the on the early stage of making videos yes putting out more stuff is beneficial not 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 algorithm wise or success wise or numbers wise it's because that's the best way to learn is to do yeah it's to do more of what you're trying to learn it's to practice yeah. more it's it's a simple equation you do more of one thing you would get better at it so if you're that's starting it. now if it's the beginning of your journey on youtube or whatever platform quantity is good i would go for quantity for sure mm -hmm. and maybe it's because of my perfectionist side I put out less because I want to pay more attention to each piece of yeah. content. And I, it feels so personal. Like every video feels so personal to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I try to spend as much time as I can to get it to, to, to the level that I want. And no, I don't, I don't think it's the case. I, it works both ways. I see a lot of creators who are putting so many videos out, like you said, two or three videos a week. It's working for them. Others like me put out a video a month and it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it was working. <laughs> it works. Beauty of it, man. It's the beauty of YouTube. You can still, it doesn't matter if something has been done before. You can still do it your own way, mm -hmm. uh, package it your way and present it differently. And like there are tutorials on the same subject all over YouTube. Like, do you see how many tutorials on generative fill are out there? It's crazy. Uh, yeah.
It is. It's crazy. After Effects rotoscoping tutorials. There, there are thousands of them. Right. But yeah. it's because I'm saying this because I hear a lot, especially from my close friends who ask me about YouTube, and they have this one idea. I want to do it, but then they like, yeah, but it's been done so many times. Like people have yeah. done this. Why should I do it? I'm like, doesn't matter. Yeah. Every every person every, like. You can give it your own touch. Your own personality will make a difference. It's all about character. It's yeah. all about style and how you present. And there's always an extra value to add. If you can so find something that you can add on top, that's it. You will stand out. It's, yeah. it's I th simple. I it's think simple. the biggest the biggest takeaway for me was just your your example of you were doing videos at the beginning and then you happened to make one video that just, you know, tickled the algorithm and uh mm. it made you uh get gain all these subscribers and become somebody who can live off of this now and for me that's a big inspiration because uh i hope to be at where you're at right now you know at some point and i know that i just can't let fear take over just if if i feel like i want to put out something you know just put it out and if the first one doesn't hit the second one will might hit the third one and I just keep you know keep consistent and I think at some point you start to see the benefits of all that stuff like all the hard work um absolutely and, and that's my biggest takeaway from yeah. you know just your experience is just like you just don't know when when what video is just going to just pop off it's like if you at least if you're trying to make this do this seriously I, I I think that that's that's something to take away. Um, thank you so much, brother. Thank you I so agree. much for coming on. I appreciate you taking the time. And yeah, man. And in the future, let's collaborate. Yes. Absolutely, man. Um, thanks for having me. It's, I really enjoyed this talk. Let's let's uh, do it again in the future. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Appreciate man. it, man. Thank you for thanks for having me.